Way. Well, cats and dogs are known for basically fighting like cats and dogs, but a cheetah and a lab have bonded at a zoo in New Jersey. Meg Baker explains how the dog is sort of a cat therapist. What do you get when you mix a puppy with a predator? Comfort. Bowie the Labrador Retriever helps ease Nandi the cheetah's anxiety. The loud purring signals she is at ease. So this is Nandi and her companion dog Bowie. They've been together since they were just a few weeks old. Playmates from day one. Cheetahs are so shy that zoos around the country are giving them their own emotional support dogs. Bowie and his cheetah sister have been inseparable for more than a year, wrestling in the snow and sharing toys. Bowie has a very important job here, which is to be kind of her confidence builder. So cheetahs are naturally skittish by nature. So one of the things that allows us to be able to bring her out and do educational presentations like this is having Bowie at her side. Nandi looks to Bowie to make sure that everything's all right and that she's safe. Bowie has similar training to that of a therapy pet for humans. He's very food motivated and he's be calm. So he's been exposed to a lot of different environments. Mm -hmm. um, part of the reason he comes home with us at night is to get him exposed to all different scenarios, car rides, you know, honking cars. These best friends have a greater purpose. There are less than 7,000 cheetahs left in the wild in Africa. Part of the program at Turtleback Zoo is to educate people and inspire them to protect these big cats. Well, that's it for KPRC Channel 2 News at Midday. Thanks for joining us. The news at noon starts right now. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News at Noon. Searching for answers, a pregnant woman shot inside of a home. What detectives are hoping to get done right now? Caught on camera, a woman violently shoved to the ground as a suspected robber tries to steal her purse. How you can help police catch him. Two people accused of dousing an apartment complex's leasing office with a flammable liquid and then setting it on fire. The dramatic video just released and where this happened. But first, we begin with the latest on the investigation into a pregnant woman who was shot at least twice. The good news here, that woman is expected to survive and her baby is okay. Now deputies are working to learn who did it. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Andy Sirota. And I'm Christine Noel. That shooting happened at a home on Auburn Valley Lane in Waterstone Crest Drive in West Harris County. Detectives are still trying to figure out if this was a home invasion. Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli explains. Yeah, the good news, the pregnant woman and her baby are expected to survive according to authorities, but the bad news right now, detectives don't have a suspect description. In a suburban Katy neighborhood, drugs, shell casings, and a bloody trail, a pregnant woman shot twice. Yes, a little concerning, a little concerning. Joe Brockman was across the street and heard loud noises and people yelling overnight. The sheriff's department last night told me that they uh, that they saw a, lot, a large amount of drugs in the house. We think it's a home invasion, but like I said, we are not clear on anything. We're not getting much cooperation from the people we've spoken to. Authorities say the pregnant woman and her baby will be okay. Detectives aren't sure who shot her, but say she was taken to the hospital by a man who lives here. We're not sure if he's a suspect or a witness. Right now, more questions than answers, but detectives say they can smell marijuana coming from the home, and they're working to get a search warrant. So we can go into the house and examine the scene. And detectives say the man who lives here and the pregnant woman are still not cooperating with authorities. Reporting in Katy, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Police need your help identifying two people who set an apartment leasing office on fire. Video shows two people breaking into the Palms at Cypress Station Apartments on January 10th. One of them had a jug with flammable liquid inside. They poured that liquid all over the leasing office furniture. In seconds, the room bursts into flames. The two people then ran away. Happening today, the body of a Liberty County Sheriff's deputy will be escorted from the medical examiner's office to a funeral home in Cleveland. This is a live picture right now where that escort is about to begin any moment now. The Houston Police Department, along with other law enforcement, will also be involved. Deputy Richard Witten died yesterday, nine months after he was shot. He was undergoing physical therapy when he suffered a heart attack and then passed away. We are still awaiting funeral arrangements. The man accused of shooting a U.S 
U.S. postal worker is expected in federal court this afternoon. Mike, uh, Matthew Anthony Williams is charged with assaulting a federal employee with a deadly weapon, among other charges. Investigators say the 24-year-old shot Adrian Jackson while he was delivering mail in December. This happened on Cedardale Drive in the Spring Branch area. Williams faces up to 20 years in prison. Jackson did not survive. New at noon, a woman targeted in a parking lot in front of several businesses in Chinatown. Take Chinatown, rather. Take a look at the surveillance video. You can see a man starting to approach a woman, and then he tries to snatch her purse, dragging her across the parking lot. Eventually, the woman lets go, and the suspect drives away in a light-colored Toyota Camry. This happened back in December on Bel Air Boulevard near Corporate Drive. Police are looking for two men and a woman in in connection to this case. If you have any information you're asked to contact Crime Stoppers. Warm and humid, but changes are on the way. Yeah, so we here. Let's turn to Justin now for the details. Yeah, it's getting out there so far. We still going to see warm stuff today. Notice the Williams Tower. You can see it, but it's kind of obscured. You know, we got a lot of cloud cover out there. It's a little murky. Dew points are on the high side as well. Those are all the boxes you want to check if you're going to see one kind of those warm, breezy, muggy afternoons. And the temperatures, well, they'll tell the story there as well at the lunchtime hour. Anywhere from the low to mid 70s and pushing the upper 70s down at Sugar Land. I wouldn't be shocked to see somebody flirt with 80 degrees today which is going to be close to near record setting temperatures uh, on this day as well. Not only that, but look at this. We're talking about close to 84s here in Houston. How about the snow that's starting to work its way in towards North Texas? I'm jumping a little tighter on that. And this is anywhere from Amarillo to Lubbock. This entire area is under winter storm watches and warnings. This little patch from Oklahoma City back off to Lubbock. Those are winter storm warnings where they could pick up four to six, maybe six to eight inches of snow, about one to three in the greater northwestern Dallas. Fort Worth area. We could see just a slight chance to see a little sleep pellets once or twice early Thursday morning, but not today, though. We're going to keep the rain chances at about 20%. I'll talk more about what those uh, mean for not only early Thursday morning, but of course, that quick return to a winter forecast in about 24 hours, guys, just a bit. All right, Justin, thank you. We are less than one month away from the Houston Livestock Show in Rodeo. Thousands of people will fill NRG Stadium and its grounds with everything from mutton busting to the big performances. And today we are learning who will be on that revolving stage. The star set a lineup for the Friday shows is being th announced throughout the day. Houston's own Lizzo announced first. That's right. And as Channel 2's Taisha Walker reports, the second performer was announced just moments ago. We now know the names of two out of three of those artists that will be performing at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo come next month. Take a listen and see if any of your guesses were as good as ours. <laughs> Take a look at the screen and see who the next performer is. Marshmello, an electronic dance music artist who typically collaborates with other artists, will be performing on March 20th. 150 Sharpstown High School students have already been selected to see Marshmello play in concert. The first announcement came early this morning at A Leaf Elsick High School. Lizzo will be performing on March 13th. The R&B superstar is a 2006 graduate of the school and former band member. She, of course, played the flute. Fellow Elstick Rams say they couldn't be happier. It definitely gives me a lot of hope and it gives me a lot of, you know, aspiration to become the next either celebrity or, you know, just become the next successful person that was part of this band right here. 150 of those students will be selected to see Lizzo perform next month. Houston is the most diverse major city in America, and so we're going to mix it up on eight nights uh, with everything from from R&B to K-pop. It's going to be a fantastic year. The name of the final artist will be announced later today at 1.30 at a South Central Houston High School. We know that the genre is hip-hop and R&B. If you want to start getting your tickets, you can do so on Thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Reporting from Sharpstown High School, Taisha Walker, KPRC, Channel 2 News. All right, Taisha, thank you. And to keep track of the announcements, go to our website, clicktohouston.com. There you'll find the lineup as well as the third location for the last performance announcement. The Astros are packing up their stuff and headed to Florida. We caught up with the team as they prepared to leave for spring training. 
They'll be in West Palm Beach ahead of opening season. Pitchers and catchers will work out for the first time next Thursday. The first official squad workout is February 17th. Turning to the campaign trail in Decision 2020, we just learned Iowa Democratic Party will hold another call next Tuesday morning with candidates because of the delayed results. Officials say a coding error is to blame and not a cyber attack for the Iowa caucuses, results being delayed. Presidential hopefuls are now in New Hampshire. Channel 2's Sion Rhodes is in Iowa right now covering the aftermath of the caucuses. You can catch her live reports starting at 4 o'clock this afternoon. A final Senate vote is scheduled for tomorrow in the impeachment trial of President Trump. Meanwhile, President Trump will come face to face with the jurors deciding his fate tonight. It's the annual State of the Union address. NBC's Chris Pallone has more from Capitol Hill. As President Trump prepares to deliver his third State of the Union address, senators prepare to render their verdict in his impeachment trial. I urge every one of our colleagues to cast the vote, the facts, the evidence, the Constitution, and the common good clearly require. It's a serious charge. The Republicans refused to get the evidence because they were afraid of what it would show. House impeachment managers and White House counsel delivered their closing arguments yesterday. Today, the question is not whether the president will be acquitted, but whether any Republicans will stray from their party's position. Alaska Republican Lisa Murkowski, seen as a possible vote for impeachment, announced she would vote no on removing the president. The Constitution provides for impeachment, but does not demand it in all instances. While West Virginia Democrat Joe Manchin, who proposed censuring the president, says he has not yet made up his mind on impeachment. His behavior cannot go unchecked by the Senate. With the president hoping for a bipartisan acquittal to propel him into election season, focus turns to red state Democrats like Arizona's Kirsten Sinema and Alabama's Doug Jones. I'm still working on it. On the eve of the impeachment vote, the president's allies say they hope he avoids the topic during the State of the Union. The White House says the president plans to focus on the future, touting the state of the economy and his efforts to control illegal immigration. The White House contends that Americans are bored with impeachment and promises a State of the Union address filled with what it calls relentless optimism. In Washington, Chris Pallone, NBC News. I'm at the point where, like, I don't even want to send them to school anymore. Turning trash into works of art, how this company is making something that you can use in your kitchen. Next on Channel 2 News at noon. Developing this uh, afternoon, a family is suing a suburban Chicago school district claiming they abused their eight-year-old son who has autism. And as Alexis McAdams tells us, he came home covered in permanent marker and was tied to a chair. A mother concerned for her child's safety. I'm at the point where, like, I don't even want to send him to school anymore. Speaking out about years of alleged abuse and neglect that she says her 8-year-old son with autism has endured at Prairie Oak Elementary School. I gained their trust, and then something happens again. The Roden family filing a lawsuit against Berwyn's North School District 98 after they say Gianni Fata Roden came home covered with permanent marker. I'm disgusted. These black markings scribbled all over the child's back. I noticed black mark on his back, and I'm like, what is this? Gianni has limited verbal skills. He's not able to tell his mom what happened. And I turned and I looked at him. He had a huge meltdown. This is not the first incident on record at Prairie Oak. Back in 2015, Lucia Rodin filed this police report with the Berwyn PD after she says a teacher's aide tied her son to a chair with an exercise band. So he can start to learn how to sit down in a chair properly and to keep him confined. Last year, the family says the school lost Gianni. A teacher called to alert them, then later found the child on another floor of the building. The family's attorney says this pattern is disturbing. I don't believe that the staff at the school has the proper qualifications to be taking care of a child like Gianni. ABC 7 reached out to District 98 and the superintendent said she doesn't know where the markings came from. A statement saying in part, thus far our video footage from the school bus and from the hallway cameras has not revealed anything that would cause us to take remedial action concerning any of our employees. But the odds says we want to make sure that he's safe and he's not going to get hurt. The school district did not comment on the allegation that the boy was restrained with an exercise ban. The family says 
it's looking for a new school for Gianni. A woman had to use her toes to call for help because her hands were crushed underneath a car. This happened along a highway in South Carolina. These pictures show a firefighter trying to get her out. Her hands were crushed when her car fell, causing the jack to slip as she changed a flat tire. The 54-year-old managed to take one off, off one of her shoes and somehow dial 911 with her toes. She is expected to be okay. Okay, so at first glance, these plates may look like they're made of glass, but a company in Japan is actually turning plastic trash into these artistic dishes. Plastic product designer and manufacturer Techno Labo Corporation makes them. They collect plastic trash washed ashore and then turn them into colorful crafts. These are just prototypes. Beautiful though. Yeah. The company eventually plans to sell them. You know, it's very artsy considering how much trash do they find in our oceans. And, you know, good for them for making yeah. something good out of it. And you know there's going to be a market yes, for that kind of stuff. Yes, without a doubt, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, there should be, too. There's a really cool company, of course, the name escapes me now, um, that my kids actually found. And it's two surfers that started it. Yeah. And they do it worldwide now. They go all across the planet and kind of collect stuff. You can buy these little bracelets and Fantastic. kind of fundraise for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really neat. So, you know, nice to see folks finally, you know, just making sure. Don't throw stuff in there. Just mm -hmm. don't. Yeah. Don't, 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 don't do it. Without um, it. Yeah, all right. So let's talk. We've got some uh, pretty hefty weather coming over the oh, next yeah. 24 hours. Changes. Which, yeah, big changes. And, I fa and if you're going to be going over towards North Texas, Lubbock, Wichita Falls, heading up to Oki City, you need to be ready for some winter conditions. And I mean big time. We're talking uh, multiple inches of snow falling in North Texas. And that's the that's real deal. That's just, you know, just a quick dusting or so. Uh, we could be looking at a fairly decent winter storm. In fact, winter storm warnings have been posted from Oklahoma City all the way back off. You saw it's a little murky here at Channel 2. Temperature-wise, pretty steady south wind has got our dew points up into the 60s. It's got our air temperature running about 10 degrees above that, all sitting in the mid 70s overall. And the winds, not as crazy as yesterday, but still breezy out there, anywhere from 15, 14, 9, 12, 14 miles an hour in Conroe. Wind gusts have been upwards of about 20 to 25, so not clocking as much as yesterday. That's why we are not under a wind advisory like we were yesterday. Now, it is muggy, though. The hair factor is going to be on a triple spritz today because these dew points are all in the 60s and even 70-degree dew point out in Katy. And that's when you get up from the moderate to the muggy factor. This is kind of sort of, think of it as like late April, May type of a dew point versus what we see generally this time of year in early February. So a lot of that cloud cover continues to stream across the state. No showers for us here just yet. We didn't think today was going to be the big day for us, but we're starting to see some develop just south of Dallas up around the Lufkin area. And then from Oki City down towards between Lufkin Lubbock and San Angelo over towards uh, Wichita Falls. This entire area here could be looking at a potential for anywhere from four to eight inches of snow. Already seeing some of that snow starting to move in towards the panhandle. So this is going to be a major winter storm for portions of Texas. Now for us, we've been talking, kind of hinting the idea, could we get any of this really cold air to move in? Well, that big dip in the jet stream will help not only transport a chance for some showers and thunderstorms, but it does mean that that cold air is digging south. And as it does, that's going to keep keep things warm for us today, but then when that front starts to move through here, that's when we expect to see not only the heavy snow start to develop on the backside of that low, because all of the warm air getting mixed in with the cold air, and that's how you get those heavy snow bands, but some showers and thunderstorms tomorrow morning that should clear by the afternoon. I don't think the rain's going to be the big issue for us. It's mainly just how cold things get, and the notice as we get into early Thursday morning, we get a quick pop, but you could get a little bit of sleet up in the Brasses Valley, and then just a slight chance, and I mean very, very slight, that you might see a snowflake or two. The ground is super warm. If you happen to see it, snap a picture because it won't be there. It'll melt almost immediately. Not going to be an issue for the roads. Won't be an issue for all of us here in terms of any kind of travel concerns. It's mainly just going to be cold as we get into the rest of the afternoon. So temperature wise will look like this. Keep it warm today and then watch what happens as we get in towards Wednesday. Starting off your commute in the 60s south of the cold front, 40s and 50s on the north side of the cold front, and then everybody crashes into the 50s as we head into the afternoon. So a little return to a winter forecast for us for about uh, 36 hours or so. And then notice by Friday and Saturday, we're back up into the 70s and a pretty good looking uh, forecast as well. Of course, the uh, XFL here in Houston, the Roughnecks yes. start yeah. on Saturday as well. And of course, Sabercats will be uh, down in Sugarland as well. Yeah, forecast has a little bit of something for everyone. Yes, it does. <laughs> All right, Justin, Justin thank you. So much. Yeah, guys.
It is Black History Month, and we are taking a look at a local artist on Houston Life. Yeah, and certainly you've heard of DNA Kids for Humans, but now there's some for your furry friends as well. Derek and Courtney standing by with a preview of Houston Life. Hi, guys. Hey, Christine and Andy. It is, is really so happening? great to see you both. I know. We we're, we're here. The impeachment hearings are not preempting us today. We hope. Fingers crossed. But as you mentioned, those doggy DNA kits. When we adopted Tex from a local shelter about a year and a half ago, we were told that he was part Maltese part poodle so we decided we would confirm those results by doing a doggy DNA test on our beloved Tex. Well guess what folks today we will get those results and I hear they might surprise all of us. Yeah I think so. Also guys in honor of Black History Month we are celebrating the work of a local artist. His name is Romeo Robinson. He's a contemporary artist here in Houston really making waves here in the art scene. His story proves it's never too late to follow your dreams. You can see his work is very lifelike. We're going to introduce you to the artist and also hear his story in the paintings coming up. Very nice. Also it's been a very big day for the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo as they reveal the last of their entertainer lineup. Lauren Kelly has been live on our Facebook page all morning long. Lizzo was a huge announcement and I think the next big announcement is coming around 1 30 p.m. So you want to check out our Houston Life Facebook page where she will be live and experiencing all the excitement as that announcement is made. Super fun all right around the corner. All right guys back to you. Yeah Lizzo, Marshmallow, Fridays at the Rodeo I know, are going to be getting incredible. Real good. And you guys just let Tex know whatever he is we love him just the way We he love is. him just the same. Yes all the same but still looking forward to seeing those results. We'll see you guys at one o'clock. Happy ending. A little boy lost his favorite stuffed toy on a Southwest Airlines. Yeah, coming up, what the airline company did to create a sweet and somewhat unique reunion. This is home. Southwest Airlines is going the extra mile to help a little boy who lost his stuffed bear named Teddy on a flight. Yeah, Grayson's mother, Christina Mulligan, says they were on a flight from Dallas, New Orleans, when the bear got lost. Mulligan contacted the airlines to try to find the bear, but it never made it to lost and found. Not to worry, though. Southwest provided the little boy with a new teddy bear with a very unique story. They posted these photos to their Facebook page showing the teddy bear going on an adventure before going home to Grayson. Grayson named his new friend Jack. Jack. Yes. All right, coming off the heels of one of the biggest food consumption days of the year. Of course, we're talking about Super Bowl Sunday. Duncan is keeping the momentum going with a, get this, hot sauce donut. Say what? Check it out. Yeah. It's a jelly donut covered in hot sauce. During the Super Bowl, Duncan teamed up with Frank's Red Hot. The hot sauce brand accepted a dare from its social media followers and covered a Duncan donut in some cayenne pepper sauce. Okay. Turns out Duncan passed the creation out to fans in two of its locations in Miami. I guess if you're into that sort of thing, a little uh, sweet know, and spice, like there you go. <laughs> Sounds like me on a good day. <laughs> Three repairs. Okay, so it's gray and warm out there right now. Yeah, it's good. When are things? Yeah, when are things changing? Uh, probably by this time. Well, I put it. The front right now looks like it's going to try to smush through here by about mid morning or so. Okay. So we're okay. going to get a couple of different rounds. We're just getting new information in with the new computer models that we'll have coming up this afternoon. Frank will have it uh, starting at four o'clock. So we'll kind of take it hour by hour and just get you all set for that. But same as uh, we've seen most of this winter. Winter for about a hot cup of coffee and then it's gone. All right, yep. Justin. Thanks so much. That's right. it for Channel Two News at noon. We'll see you again at four p.m. Have a great day. Thank you.